boring start to. Uh, okay, I will up. start. I will start sharing my screen then. Okay, uh, everybody can see my screen, right? Yes. Okay, uh, so today um, we are going to talk about, uh, we are going to talk about um, the new resource that Joe provided to share the mocks and the, screen, and the designs. This is based on our, something that the community asked uh, on the last uh, meeting. Uh, yeah. So then we are going to share what we want to do. We have a more clear plan of what we want to achieve within the next two months. We want to iterate we, and we will share some details about that. And then I'm going to present some typography changes. It's a proposal. Uh, some of you may have already seen the, the, those in, in the Gitter channel. And then Uli is going to raise a question regarding the incompatibility of Jenkins of the Jenkins grid system with the Bootstrap grid system and what can we, what can be done to address the, uh, that issue. And then we will end up talking about what to do with the about the Slack channel and discussions. And this is going to be Joe. So um, participants and their interests. I think only I think we only have a new person. Uh, hi, uh, Roman Rodriguez Hill. So, well, I'm Felix Queiruga. I'm the front end developer here at Cloud. Is that uh, I'm participating in this uh, in the development of the new Jenkins UI. So, can, can you introduce yourself, Roman? Sure. Roman? Yeah. So I'm Roman Rodriguez Hill. I'm part of uh, the training team at Cloudbees. Uh, as as Batis said, I'm the guy from the Canary Islands, <laughs> um, and basically uh, last year I was trying to spend some time contributing to Jenkins. I made a few commits to Jenkins Core and published a few blog posts. And in previous jobs, I've been working as an engineer in the front end teams. So I really wanted to. I really like front end and UX. Uh, so I wanted to try to contribute to, to what you guys are doing, which I think is great. Oh, great. Uh, welcome. <laughs> we appreciate having as many people as possible here. Um, I think we all know each other, all the other people we all know each other, so maybe we, we can move on to the update part. So, Joe, can you talk about this? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, if you want to just open up that link. Um, uh, yeah, sure. So it's it's a very straightforward resource. Um, I actually, unfortunately, missed the last uh, SIG meeting, but uh, I went back and watched the recording, and something that I was getting from the conversation was, um, you know, it can be challenging to, because it's at a very specific time and we're all in different time zones, it can be challenging to make every single meeting, which is totally fair. Now, we do have everything, uh, the output, the notes, the agenda, and the decks, um, from every meeting sort of um, documented in one resources Google Doc, but uh, there was a request for having everything sort of consolidated as far as uh, design mocks in one place. So this is a very simple web page where the intent is going to be for every uh, SIG meeting, anytime there's a new design related mock shared, that graphic will go up here in the stream and each one is linked back to its um, slide deck, to its respective slide deck where it was shared um, so that you can get more context for the, the design logic behind these mockups. So this is hopefully kind of serving that need. And I, I don't know, I think, um, I think Wadik and Daniel, I'm not sure if Daniel's on, we're kind of requesting this. Does this sort of uh, suit the need that you were describing Wadik? I, I would love your take on it. I did not look at the thing yet, but it seems interesting, yeah. Okay, it's super simple. Uh, like I said, it's just kind of bringing everything into one place visually, and hopefully that's kind of helpful for when you can't make meetings and stuff like that. Um, but we can, of course, uh, update this if needed. Yeah, maybe we'll just ping Oleg on that one or something. 
providing the link. I think it's great because I think Oleg was at least one one person requesting, you know, having like oh, okay. a. I mean, I'm not saying Valek didn't, but just saying that I do remember Oleg asking for like a more like global overview, not just like the header work, you know, like you know what's kind of the target, mm-hmm. even if obviously things are going to be, you know, adjusting adjusted uh as 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 we're going discovering technical limitations or whatever so yeah yeah there's always sort of a balance with stuff like this because yeah yes everything is sort of been documented up until now but it can also be really valuable to see it all to see it visually in one place consolidated so i, I totally get that um it, you know at the same time i have to make sure that we're spending time working on this and rather not not getting too caught up in the process of documenting it um, but let's let's use this mm-hmm. moving forward and can totally iterate and we'll see what Oleg. Has can to you see. zoom slightly? I mean, for the recording, I guess it would be interesting for people to quickly have a glimpse on that, even if we will provide the link to those things for people. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, and I actually already added the link to this web page um, yeah. to the resources Google Docs. So it, there's nothing new on here today. This is just all the the mocks we've we've seen in the past couple of weeks. So. And that's it for that bullet point, unless anyone has any other thoughts on it. This card.co is just a kind of free hosting place, or is this something that you own? Or? It's it's sort of a, a very simple one-stop shop, host a, a, um, a one-page website kind of solution. It's nothing fancy. Yeah. Right. I wonder. I wonder if we should... I don't remember exactly how it's set up on Jenkins.io, but we should probably make sure that the UX SIG page like is either has these directly or you know points to the right things and it's find- findable from there. I didn't check. Mm-hmm. So. All right, so I can do an action item to make it link to the UX SIG card I have from the from the SIG page. Cool. I think long term, this is something we probably would like, would want to consolidate all of these a little bit better because there's a lot of stuff floating around. But in the in the short term, hopefully this improves it. And then, uh, yeah, we'll link it back to the website there. That'd be good. Okay, great. Thank, Thank you, Joe. Thank you, John. Um, yeah, moving on to the typography changes. So, I oh, know, April goes. Okay, um, then again, that is you again, Joe. <laughs> Okay, cool. So um, just for a bit of context, Roman, so this uh, link to the slide deck will be available, of course, um, on the resources doc. Um, but so, so you might want to go in for, for greater context about what this SIG is and, and what we're trying to achieve with it. The first few slides in this deck and every deck are always the same and they, they, they might be good reading for you. Um, but yeah, if you could go up one slide, Felix. I don't- Okay, wait a second. Uh, Number yeah, five. It starts here, okay. Yeah, so this is the new content. Um, so Felix mentioned that we wanted to, that, that we had to find sort of a more um, specific strategy and goals for these next couple of months. Um, for ex- So if we think back to a couple of SIG meetings ago, something that I said was was coming up next in addition to typography was uh, designing the redesigning the admin monitor warnings. Now these are something that do that does need to be redesigned. Um, however, in looking at the timeline and sort of uh, how long it took us to implement to design and implement um, the header bar, and, and and we're still refining this this process of getting feedback from everyone and and implementing all of these designs. So, it, you know, it takes some time, and we kind of did a little bit of a reevaluation to see how we can have the maximum impact over these next couple of months. Um, so what we did is we uh, chose some, some selective improvements for that maximum impact. So by focusing on base styles and some of the more common components, we want to be able to deliver small iterative improvements across many different types of screens, right? Um, and then I mentioned here that uh, selecting that we've selected these because the challenges that we'll that will solve in designing and implementing these particular elements will help inform more complex and critical components in the future months. Um, and then hopefully we can also mitigate some risk here, right? So changing typography is no small task, but um, 
we but but it's more reasonable to try and solve typography than to try and solve the entire uh well let's just say to try and solve something that leans heavily on typography without thinking about type first like table styles for example so we're focusing on base styles here uh, if you could go to the very next slide and here's sort of a, a visual of what we'd like to, to to fix over the next couple of months so we've already of course got the header bar with breadcrumbs uh, the footer is very straightforward buttons are probably not quite as straightforward but fairly reasonably fairly reasonable to get done right now there's quite a bit of um, uh, disparity in button styles throughout the Jenkins user experience so I'd like to consolidate that and, and improve those across the board uh, Felix will share in a moment we're already working on some typography improvements and then a big one is that nav sidebar um, uh, on the left side side of the uh, interface there would be a huge win and then also sprucing up some remaining iconography. This is what we'd like to achieve over the course of March and April. So it's fairly ambitious when you think about the timeline and, and some of the technical constraints that we're probably going to run up against, but I think that's a good thing. Um, and this is what we would like to get done. This will really help inform more complex problems in the coming months. So yeah. any thoughts on that before we go to the next slide? Yeah. yeah. Do you have a link to this deck so I can put it into my uh, notes or? Yeah, so yeah. I will add this one to the resources Google Doc, uh, just like every other deck. So um, I'll put it there after this call, just so we don't interrupt can you the flow. Just paste the link into the chat. Sure, one second. I would like to elaborate on what you just said, Joe. Go for it. Um, please, yeah. So one of the things that we realize, and this is a concern that Oleg shared with us, uh, is that we 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 were too small and too slow iterating on the header and everything, and we want to be more agile. We want to deliver faster. We want to to basically to be able to iterate more and um, and get a faster velocity, right? Um, so one of our goals for uh, dividing the work like this was to try to find work that can be done in parallel. Not just one in waterfall model, one now big header changes and one big typography changes and big sidebar changes now. For example, footer patterns can be done in parallel. We will probably have sometimes many PR, many open PRs. We will also probably be separating within, for example, we will not probably land the sidebar at once. We'll probably try to iterate on it, try to get smaller changes accepted first and then, and then expand on, on those. And the reason for that is um, I think it's easier to pro to promote, to gather community feedback and discussions uh, that if you uh, framing with uh, framing the discussions within a bigger picture, I think uh, it, it, uh, having a smaller PRs can help with that. So that's what we want to try uh, these next two months. And that's something what I'm going to elaborate again. So that's sort of our plan. Any thoughts on this? Uh, sounds much better to me. Great. Great. Um, my, my thought is that you expressed it much better than I did, Felix, so thank you. Okay, <laughs> it's okay. Uh, yeah, everybody will, see, will be able to see this later. Yeah, so yeah, that's one of the, well, the state of the current buttons and why we wanted to tackle them. <laughs> Basically, yeah, the style is a bit old. Hyperlink. So, yeah, thank you, Joe. I'm sure. I'm going to move on to the typography changes. So, uh, I'm building basing on what we just talked about uh, regarding typography. Uh, what I worked in these past two weeks is basically taking a look at the way the typography code is set up, looking on how we can change it, looking uh, to how the typography behaves in Jenkins, uh, doing some market research, so to speak, see what, what other similar tools use uh, the typography on that side. And um, what I prepared was a really small, as a small PR, uh, sorry, PR candidate as possible with some basic typography changes that will uh, enable us to, to do iterate more, basically. Uh, based on what we talked last last uh, SIG meeting, we want to to have typography changes 
that are go into the base styles of Jenkins that we don't need to update each plugin. That we, we just want some reasonable defaults. I think Vadek, you Vadek, you you raised this issue before last last meeting. So yeah, so what we want to do is basically land this small PR first and then try to see maybe we can work in the hyperlinks. Maybe we can look if we can improve the typography in the plugins table. Maybe we can look. But first, we want to, to have these base typography changes on. So the, if it's OK, this PR will probably land this week. Um, OK, so identify stakeholders. Um, this is something that we also raised, a uh, topic that also came up in past SIG meeting, that maybe we can, it would be good to identify stakeholders for each UI feature or each UI domain. For example, regarding the admin monitors, it would be great to have some security people involved. So um, I want to throw the question out there. Is this anybody feel that I uh, know any specific stakeholders for, for typography? Ideally, I would like to, to gather some feedback from everybody who uses from different screen sizes, different zoom levels in monitors, all that stuff. Even especially, for example, if people have trouble reading certain fonts, or certain stuff. So uh, all the feedback would be appreciated. So if somebody wants to say, okay, I, I, this is my use case. This is what I feel about this. So uh, they are welcome. Um, yeah. And now to gather some feedback. So to, today I raised on the SIG channel. I raised a, 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 put together a quick deck showing the typography changes. And uh, I also published a Docker container with them. Mm -hmm. Wait a second, please. Okay, so first of all, um, what did I find? I, um, what I found is that the Jenkins UI code uses different levels of font sizes from 13, uh, from 12, 10 to 11 to 13 to 14. In some screens, it uses 15. It, it really varies a lot but it's really inconsistent. Also, uh, the, the fonts are, I believe it, they, I found they were too packed. Uh, yeah, so the readability was not the best one in some screens. So, and also the, the font, uh, so this is regarding font sizes, right? Also, regarding font, uh, the types being used, the, the Jenkins project, you, it was using Roboto, uh, the Roboto font. And uh, it was in most of the code base, it was using um, Helvetica, Arial, and other similar fonts, right? Is anybody writing in the chat? Please tell me if somebody is. Okay. It's no, no it's, uh, it's other stuff, I think. <laughs> okay. I'm actually answering questions from Roman, but anyone you know, uh, outside can feel free because I'm trying to provide basically uh, lending information for, for people who are willing to understand where we are. You know, anyway. It's okay. hard to present and keep up the chat at the same time though. So if somebody does have a question to the present to just ask it straight out, I'd say. Yeah, please, please do tell because I'm not looking at the chat. <laughs> I'm not no. able to look at the chat. So yeah, so move to uh, I, um, on the topic of fonts and the type systems. Um, we Jenkins project is using some rather old and ugly looking defaults. For example, on on Windows and Linux, it's using Arial font, which is not the greatest looking one, the best looking one. So um, yeah, so this is what what, what I found out there was. So we took some the uh, uh, we took some decisions. And this is basically a proposal. So the first part of our proposal is move towards using system fonts. Historically, people used to add custom fonts for uh, for two uh, for two reasons. Uh, uh, people added custom fonts to their websites because either because the default fonts were too big, or they want a specific font to reflect a specific design. Sorry, not too big, too, too ugly. So lately, the modern operating systems, both desktop and mobile, you, you offer a good array of decently lo decent looking fonts. And basically, the trend in the industry is use system fonts whenever possible, right? And I, I did examine 
similar tools like GitHub and well other tools. And everybody, basically everybody's using system fonts and there's a big case for them. Users are familiar with them. It does not look off with the operating system of the users. They also save load time. For example, on a normal Jenkins page, and the robot font was 20% of the server traffic generated by the, well, of what you done of the front-end pay, payload was the font, 20%, right? So definitely helps there. Um, yeah, so there are drawbacks. The first drawback is that the UI can be the sizing of the some elements that depend on the font can be a bit inconsistent from one operating system to another. And then the, well, yeah, that's basically it. That's the biggest drawback. drawback. But I think, um, yeah, I think th basically this is the current trend in the industry. There are good reasons to try this. And yeah. I will show you how it looks in after this in Ubuntu and OS X. Um, yeah, so does, does anybody want to say something about this uh, font? Uh, the font system proposal a change proposal or something looks good and sensible i would like to see it <laughs> what sorry jeremy i said i would like to see it i mean if you can show the yeah yeah well, to see the demo yeah well yeah sure after this uh, i will have next next slide so um, let me uh, talk quickly about the text size font sizes we chose and uh, we Basically, uh, my, my, my research showed that most of the tools, of um, similar tools, were using a 14 pixels font size with a line height of 1.5. Sorry, I put here 1.6, but it's 1.5. Basically, it's what everybody was is, is using, and for a reason, it, uh, it's a decent font size that allowed showing um, a decent amount of information on a screen. Um, with the same line, line, line height, it gives mm. enough room to breathe mm. to the user. So basically, what I, what uh, this uh, this PR uh, will propose, unifying all the font sizes, except on the setup wizard, by the way, but to a uh, font system based on 14 pixel font size, and then uh, and for smaller parts use 12 pixels, and for bigger parts, for bigger lists. Maybe use 16 pixels. Headings, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we also change headings, but those changes for the headings are not final at all. So yeah, uh, these changes what I, you are about to see um, are a proposal. You can change, and these are meant as a first step and not as an end goal. Okay. So basically, I'm going to show some examples. This is on on OS X on my laptop, on my MacBook Pro. This is what was the old the old landing page of Jenkins with the old typography. I think even if it was Helvetica being used, and this is this is with the new font. So the changes from here to here, you can see the uh, disposition of and the the dimensions of some stuff definitely changes. And this is on an on an Ubuntu system, the different monitor resolution uh, on a full HD monitor. As you can see, the font does look different. It does look more in line with the native operating operating system. In the system font, no, no, yeah, the system font is Sego UI. It's rather good looking, too thin for my taste, but yeah. Okay, this is the job screen. Uh, yeah, for people watching, Jeremy was asking if on Windows the the the, the font <laughs> was Comic Sans uh, MS. <laughs> So yeah, I guess it depends. Actually, it could be, you know, because it's by definition the system font. So well, yeah, <laughs> pretty fun if it was. We can do a theme for that. You can make a try to see how it looks. <laughs> An April I'm gonna advocate. I'm gonna advocate for that to be fairly low on the priority list. Uh, the Comic Sans <laughs> testing. We Maybe on April yeah. first, I will do, create that as PR. I will okay. create this in uh, twenty-ish days. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, yeah, so this is the job summary screen uh, on, on the old screen, So, and this is on the new OS X. But keep in mind that I know this there is more white space under the header, but this is because the header heading dimensions change. But for example, I like the permalinks change. 
it's definitely a bit, uh, I think they, they are more readable, they are less packed together. Yeah. So, yeah. Also, yeah, please note. Looks a also, bit easier yeah, also, the also, please notice that yeah, that I I took the the font size down a bit from 13 pixels to 12 pixels on the side panels, because I know we we have had problems of fitting stuff within those panels. There are some there's lots of open issues of all the time, so that's why I proposed that size. We can always revert it, of course. Okay, so this so, is what it would. Yes, sorry, Joe. Oh, sorry, sorry, Felix. I just want to point out too, like it's a great reason to to go this route because it's become the industry standard as you've described and as you were researching. <clears throat> Excuse me, but it's also, if we think about it, it's a it's a sort of an opportunity to benefit from all of the uh, investigation and research that several large large companies have done to see what's best for for users on their system. And I think there's a lot of value in um, allowing users to, to not jump into a, a different approach to typography and different fonts just, just when they're in Jenkins. So I think yeah. overall, this can be really good for just user consistency in the larger uh, Jenkins experience and in the larger CloudBees experience as well. Um, no. But anyway, in the sorry, go on. <laughs> okay. Uh, so basically, this is a this is a this is a big one. I know this is this one is going to raise lots of discussions. This is in a form. Uh, this is this was the old screen, the old type system, and this is on the new one. As you can see, there is more vertical spacing within the elements. For I, I, for me at least, it's more readable. But maybe some people will have a problem with having less information available on the screen. This is what it looks like in Ubuntu. It would look like in Ubuntu. And then, for example, the security panel, uh, the security configuration. This is what looks right now uh, on the current phone system. And this is what we lo we're looking on the new one. Again, more vertical breathing room. And then to, be, to not be annoying, this is what it would look on the plugin table, more readable, basically. So yeah, this, is, uh, this was just a, some iteration of the typography, this is something that I'm going to probably create a PR within this week, by the, uh, before the end of the week. Uh, yeah, I, we would appreciate all the feedback uh, we can gather on this one. It's not meant as a, it's meant as a stepping stone, okay? It's not meant as an, all future improvements would be appreciated and we can, we hope to deliver them quickly in, a, in another PR. So please, um, I'm sure everybody has thoughts on this. Please share them. Can you drop a link to the presentation in the chat, please? And I'll put it in the uh, minute. It's on the agenda, but. Oh, okay. Then I will uh, fish it out. It's already, it's already in the chat, I think. I think he's shared it here at the meeting. Oh, yeah. yeah it was two different decks, but, um, oh. but yeah, no problem. It, it's in there, but I'll also drop a link. One sec. Yeah, okay. So. Uh, especially Uli, uh, team Vadek, any any thoughts on this? Uh, I I mean I've gone I've gone through it quite a lot. Mostly looks good. It's kind of it's quite hard to tell the change. You've got to flick around a lot. It's, yeah. it's, it's pretty similar, isn't it? It's not it's no major. Um, I found a few issues which I've told Felix about on Gitter. Um, it's it's more visible when you actually use it. I think. Um, yeah in the screenshots, it doesn't uh, retain so much attention, but when you are using it, it's, it's it feels like something's different. Yeah, I agree. That's that's where it really comes into play is when you're you're in it. And also, you know, over, over the periods of time, as we integrate other CSS improvements, this will, these improvements will compound and, and it won't just, you know, they'll complement the other things that we're, that we're improving. So overall, we'll create a better experience. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Screenshots don't really do this one justice. You really got to click around and see it. Yeah. yeah, I think it's, you know, I see it as kind of a foundational change that we need to build upon, you know, uh, and it would be more visible when we like see the difference between, say, you know, the weekly from four weeks ago and the weekly from, um, you know, we eight weeks or 12 weeks from now, you know, in the future. And, uh, you know, we need to basically 
lend it as soon as possible so that we can you know address the feedback how like you know the fields so we see you know we can't address every single plugin that would be doing weird things so it's i think it's very interesting and we need to as kind of a <laughs> building back on what you were talking about felix about the velocity uh, yeah i think we need to lend it and move to the next item and see you know pos potential fallout so we won't be able to address any you know potential yeah, probable problems here we need to lend it and, and move on yeah, especially because there are some risks. Uh, for yeah. example, I want to see uh, the, the monospaced fonts look smaller or certain, on certain components. So I want to see, depending on, I will use one technique or another to set the font size for monospaced fonts. But I want to try to see it with actual plugins. That, yeah. uh, with plugins that actually do change it. So I think that's what would be good, having the actual changes out there. Right. So that people yeah, I mean. In a weekly. This is this is what we've come to realize in the software world. You know that uh, when people talk about betas and release candidates, nobody cares until it's actually released, and then people start providing feedback. So I guess we should actually push into the weekly and and see what people have to say. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Indeed. But yeah. Just ship it. Okay. <laughs> Great. Oh, yeah. um, you raise the font size on the the, um, text, <laughs> on the ones where you type your like script on some and whatnot first. <laughs> Okay, uh, any more thoughts on this before we move on? Okay. I think overall it looks good. I mean, I like it. I mean, but yeah, I think the main feedback is obviously we'll need to test as well in proper setups, you know? Yeah, definitely. I have hundreds of items rather than just a few. But I mean, I think the overall direction I'm, I'm happy with, at least personally. Great. Hopefully we will get get merged it soon. <laughs> then. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Next point. Uh, Uli, can you please introduce us to 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 what your proposal? Mm -hmm. um, maybe you can you click on the Bootstrap link for instance. Yeah. Maybe maybe it's good if you can provide some context on. And scroll a little bit down. A little bit until the uh, image is coming. Um, okay, there are images. Okay. Yeah, here this one. Okay. So um, I uh, released this week um, a new version of the warnings plugin. And uh, one thing I made in this release was a refactoring of all the UI components that I'm using. These are now bundled plugins. So everybody else can use this plugins as well. So what I'm using is Bootstrap, Font ASM, and some additional tools. And one thing which is incompatible with the current Jenkins is uh, Bootstrap 4 I'm using, because in Jenkins we are using uh, yeah, a quite old version of Bootstrap from yeah, 2.14, uh, it's Bootstrap 3, and currently Bootstrap 5 is in development, so I think yeah, this is something we need to change, uh, because most of the modern JavaScripting uh, uh, libraries uh, expect some recent versions of Bootstrap, for instance. So I'm wanted to use tables and some Bootstrap grids. And these seem to be not compatible with uh, Jenkins because uh, we are using a quite old grid. And this grid is, uh, as you see on this image here, mm, is this place where I'm using this grid. This is uh, the grid I'm using. And this is a official Bootstrap 4 grid, but in Jenkins we are using an old version. And yeah, I, I discussed it already, I, I think two meetings ago. I, I'm not sure if it's a good idea to use this grid only in my plugins. I think it would be better if Jenkins would use a more up to date version of the grid. So the idea is that I prepare a pull request in Jenkins that will replace the old Jenkins grid with the new one that I'm using here in this screenshot. And yeah, this will of course <laughs> break some plugins, I think. So one thing is, yeah, leave the old grid forever. And the problem is that we not only use an old grid, we use a patched version of that grid that has not 12 columns as the default, they have 24 columns. 
So my plan is yeah to replace that grid and I created an issue for that. You find it in the agenda. And the idea is if you have some ideas around that issue, please uh, comment in that issue. So we can discuss that topic before I'm creating a pull request. Well, I think it's a great idea. Um, also using the bootstrap grid is free documentation. Uh, it also has more utilities for 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 example spacing stuff right no more using a empty paragraph to add some vertical spacing mm -hmm. um yeah my only concern is we would I, what i would suggest is try to do some research to see what plugins would actually be what mm -hmm. the actual impact on plugins would be yeah for some yeah so basically have a, a list of those it's, it involves some grep grep magic <laughs> But yeah, yeah, I already grabbed in a GitHub and there are not so many which actually use columns because actually we don't have much plugins that use uh, UI, at least uh, open sourced ones. I don't know what you have in at CloudBees. But I think it's a, a change similar to your changes to the footer or header. Um, yeah, there will be some things which will which look weird but yeah, we can fix it. So um, yeah. it would be good if we can take that effort. Yeah, definitely. So any anybody else has any thoughts on this, on the matter? Okay, um, so what I would suggest to Lee is uh, maybe we can, if we can get a, and proper list with the plugins, maybe we can create a list of the plugins priori prioritized by used, used. so mm -hmm. just to see the, the, what the impact is, you know, to see yeah. if there are uh, 50,000 used plugins versus 1,000 used uh, number of used, you know. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, uh, and if these changes we include this, we will do our job with our proprietary plugins, of course. Um, Dumb question from uh, Roman. No new ex UI actually expert. Um, sorry if you said it, Uli, but I mean, yeah. If we move to from from Bootstrap three to Bootstrap four everywhere, we're gonna we're gonna break the world, right? We break some layouts, yes. So I mean, like, is this? I mean, on the UI development uh, ecosystem. What's the kind of a story here? Is this like, are, you know, is it like the community is moving away from, are the, you know, are the communities moving away from Bootstrap 3 and, and you know, upgrading, everybody's going to Bootstrap 4? Or is this like Python and nobody cares about Python 3? Well, now it's, it's the case, but, you know, it's like a fork and people keep using the old version of Bootstrap or, you know, I mean, by that, I mean, should we uh, also kind of, uh, upgrade the Jenkins ecosystem to bootstrap four because that's the way to go, for instance, you know, I hope I'm kind of clear. Yeah, actually in, in Jenkins, we don't use very much from bootstrap. It's just the grid we are using currently. Yeah, right. So this is a small change, I think, but this is something we need to discuss in more general. I think which part of UI libraries we, we, we should have in Jenkins. So. Currently, we have actually nothing. Now I have for the plugins some more libraries, but this is some kind of architectural um, thinking we need to do for Jenkins. What should be part of core and what not? As far as I remember, Jenkins core cannot use uh, plugins to visualize things. So if we want to use Bootstrap 4 in core, it must be part of core and not in a plugin. Yeah, well, regarding that, for example, um, and yeah, um, I, one thing is definitely Jenkins need, need, to, provide, need to provide a grid. Mm -hmm. uh, because plugins need a grid, basically. Other UI elements you can put, uh, you can add a Bootstrap card, whatever you want, and you can use that, but the grid is definitely a problem. And by the way, you can name a space, uh, Jenkins utilities, for example, instead of a dot Jenkins dash card or whatever you want, but you do need a grid system 
and the current one is not standard and non non extensible basically mm-hmm. and that's the, that's the problem it, it conflicts now with your plugins, but I'm sure it will conflict with other other ones so and the problem about this is probably going to plugins that yeah it's basically things will look off. And it's not about also using using Bootstrap within Jenkins. In my opinion, the way I see it, it's not about using Bootstrap within Jenkins. It's that just adding Bootstrap will break everything, basically. Because the current grid is also not the Bootstrap three grid. Mm-hmm. It's right. a change for it. I, it's really weird. I don't know. So yeah. Um, so maybe well, we can. Are, are there alternatives to adapt? certain plugins meanwhile uh, that bigger transition takes place? Actually, I don't know. Uh, I think on the UI side, we don't have much plug or much work in plugins up to now. So the UI is quite limited uh, in most of the plugins I know. So most don't plugins think... just use HTML and that's all. No, well, I'm, 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 what I'm concerned about is, for example, in the short term, is in the warnings ng plugin, uh, because it's the one with who is uh, the, the one plugin who's uh, that's actually using all of this, and it, it's what like seven percent of the install base, so it definitely has a sizable number of installs. Mm-hmm. And it's expected yeah. to grow, right? Uh, and if, so maybe. If there's... If there's a way of changing warnings ng for some time, uh, meanwhile the grid and bootstrap is included into core itself, then that would be a way to smooth the thing. I know it's somehow putting work that uh, later will be done, but if it helps the smooth in the transition, it might be an uh, option as well. Yeah, something I wanted to to propose, I propose Uli, uh, maybe we can discuss it further, is to sandbox the plugin views because um th- and that's something that i actually want to explore more within the jenkins ecosystem is that you it's problem problematic loading lots of javascript lots of css within the jenkins and everything will clash right but if you can sandbox within an iframe certain complex views you can do whatever they want whatever you want there right so maybe that's an approach we could not explore maybe it's complex maybe it's not but uh, maybe maybe that i think that's something we can Maybe it's worth exploring in a transition period. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, gr- uh, great. So, anybody else wants to add something on this topic? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, well, thanks for raising it. I think I think this is the right thing to do. Um, we just, uh, as with anything, we need to kind of try to do it cautiously and considerately. It sounds like that's the plan, so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so next topic, archiving the Slack channel. So something all like did mention on the, on this, on the secret Slack channel. So Joe, uh, I believe you have some updates on this. Yeah, just a small, small item, uh, essentially, we had some pretty valuable conversations um, when this SIG was, was starting to ramp up over in the Slack channel before we switched to Gitter. We didn't want to lose those conversations because they might be useful for reference later. Um, so I got in touch with the um, the admin or I guess the owner of the, the Slack organization for the Continuous Delivery Foundation. He was the only person with the rights or the um, uh, ability to go in there and actually archive properly. So. Long story short, I have an archived file uh, of all of our conversations from that time. If anyone has any preferences on where to put that, I could certainly put it on the resources list and link it in Gitter. Um, you know, it probably isn't something we're going to need, but it has been successfully archived and we can refer back to it as we need to. Great, so we can, thank you, Joe. Uh, so then we can move on and actually, yeah have the channel we can forget about the channel then right <laughs> yeah i mean yes, but yeah. then yeah i would still uh yeah request that we have a link or a zip file stored somewhere you know because i mean it is great that we've done that work but for now still people can't 
access it and we'll have to request it. I mean, you can be explicit and already request. That's like, I don't know, there's the public zip or something posted somewhere. Sure, I'll put it right on the on the, the UX SIG resources Google Doc. Um, Thank you very much. Sure, no problem. And for reference, in case anyone has, has lost track of that document, we try to put everything that we share or discuss right here um, on this resources document. And if there is actually not another point to raise, um, mm. the discussion on the chat with Roman led me to think we, I mean, I already kind of raised it a bit, but I think we should have a page, a landing page somewhere you know, something like a getting started uh, UX page somewhere. That's like the always up to date information about maybe that's the Jenkins IO UX page, you know. Uh, you know, for anyone that would be joining us, you know, in the next weeks or month, uh, something that would avoid us, uh, prevent us from having, a, having to tell people, yeah, everything is the, in the running notes. So just go through it, go through the 10 pages and find anything that's valuable and please figure out yourself what's what's stale and what's up to date what's still relevant you know so something like a one pager or something you know with like up to date links or something what do you think um so are you describing like a, a simple page on jenkins.io Sorry, I just want to make sure I understand. Yeah, right. maybe. I mean, I'm not. I'm not strongly be feeling about where it should be. Probably living on the web slash seek page, a seek slash UX page. You know, on the Jenkins website would make sense, but I'm not requiring it really. Uh, just saying that I think it would be valuable to you know for people like Roman or anybody in the future, something like you know in a few minutes if you're interested, you can I don't know, like a half page or a page wide length, you could figure out, you know, what is, for instance, the mockups, because I think that's the thing we want to keep up to date somewhat. Uh, I don't know, maybe the, the, the link to the, you know, Jira, that's if you scroll down, you will find the Jenkins epic <laughs> on the issues, you know, something like this that would actually point, give you a few pointers for anybody to jump into it and start, you know, getting involved, basically. Yeah, I would say, uh... Things I would I would like to have, and now I'm making the getting the context. But things I would like to have as a newcomer would be uh, relevant Jira tickets, and some of them pointed as newbie friendly. So for those that are doing first things in the Jenkins UI, which ones are like easier to get started with? Uh, also, the repo, which I guess is the core repo, but maybe then a few PRs that are a good a good examples of the work that is being done in the UI. Uh, so these sorts of things that are uh, the first thing you tend to look at when you're joining a project. I think that those would be helpful for new for people joining the group. Okay, okay. makes sense. So we do have have this web page with. Um, uh, sorry, it looks like it's part of a longer link, but it's just that last one I just put in the comments, which is the page for the UX or the user experience SIG. It sounds like maybe we can achieve this by just. Adding, adding some so updating the resources on here. I agree. Essentially, okay. Yeah, we'll maybe make sure it's on the same page. Maybe even have an actual a bullet point list or, or something, because right now I think also the hyperlinking experience in this site is not the best. For me, it's a bit difficult to. Think. Yeah, I mean, it is probably there's probably some limitations in the static generating the chat static generator system. Uh, still, yeah, something like getting started. Uh, you know, part there would probably make a lot of sense. And I mean, I, I love what just Roman just said. If we can file some, you know, maybe split, I think building upon what you just, you know, you said also at the beginning or at least a few minutes earlier, uh, uh, Felix about, you know, splitting things a bit more, trying to accelerate. I think it would actually be great if we are able to file a few things like we really smaller and tagged as newbie friendly because actually people would be actually working on these, getting started, contributing. And that's really what we want to hear. We want people involved to provide feedback, but also potentially people to actually do the work, you know, play with the software, contribute to Jenkins overall. So yeah, I mean, it could be, you know, very um, virtual circle here. 
<laughs> yeah, I think that would be great because there is this barrier of entry that you feel overwhelmed about all the things you have to do. So if you have simple, simple ticket, then you focus on uh, how everything else works, like the, the ecosystem, and you get that thing done, and then you get more confident and start building on top of that. Let's create a ticket for for Roman. I think he's really looking <laughs> for it. <laughs> yeah, I, w- I would really like that. <laughs> okay, great. So. Yeah, thank you, everybody. I, mean, I think it's an important point, though. Just I would like to say that I mean, getting more people involved in the project would be a good thing. I mean, it would help speed us up. So maybe it's something we should talk about more in the next meeting. Or yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. Especially if people want to tackle all the some stuff like we are not planning on doing, but it definitely needs to be done. For example, there's a closed PR by just sort of about moving the configuration pages to from tables to tips. It's close to bigger of a scope, but I think that's absolutely needed. I think that's that's a, a huge need. Um, that's incredible. Yeah. So, I mean, seeing as Felix is essentially the only paid full-time developer on this, I mean, if we could get yeah. more people working yeah. on things, that would just we accelerate. Right. accelerate. And, yeah. I mean, for instance, I th- I'm thinking about something that probably would be actually doable by a lot of people who have the you know, the skills. And UX, for instance, we've discussed a few times publicly and possibly uh, between some of us, you know, the past, for instance, the uh, admin monitor thing that shouldn't really be called monitor, but it's you know, monitor is only a thing, only Jenkins admins come to understand at some point, but it's like an alert, actually. It's like a notification notification thing. So, you know, moving it to the right and make it a bell only, like, you know, GitHub, Trello, a lot of tools do to make it also, because we're talking about system fonts here, but, you know, moving to the right and looking like the others about like, here's the notification and maybe it's, if it's a security notification actually have the different bell or maybe a red bell. Uh, I think that can, that's one. I think uh, Felix at some point said that it was not maybe a big one. So definitely maybe a good candidate for, you know, newbie friendly. And then we would having, we'll be having people here and more review that PR and, you know, basically be able to accelerate and then fulfilling what uh, Oleg and others said. Yeah, so. definitely. And UI issues are, are great for newly friendly because it, as, as Roman said, it helps you grow more confidence. And it's definitely more easy to verify that it is something rather than, you know, changing some Java protocol or <laughs> whatever that, how Jenkins works underneath, right? Yeah. That's, yes, a, that's that- a great idea, definitely. <laughs> So that example that Batiste just mentioned, is it, was it Batiste about the typical notification we get in Jenkins when it's outdated, for instance? Yep. Uh, so switching that from yeah. where it is to the right and replacing it with a bell, something like yeah. that. Yeah, it might be something we want to discuss a bit because we have, a, I mean, I don't want to contribute them just because, but, you know, indeed, I mean, in terms of UX, only experts in Jenkins, I think, understand why the hell we call that a monitor. Um, <laughs> it's it's really an alert or a notification, yeah. you know. Um, and yeah. uh, I think an issue has been filed recently by Jesse on the open source tracker about removing the term admin monitor and calling it alert, or we need to come up with a term maybe, you know. And that's why I'm saying then maybe actually the right thing to do is and like to try and make it look like, you know, Trello. Um, GitHub and probably a lot of others where oh. there's you know bells on the right. Yeah, that uh, makes sense. Yeah. You know, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah definitely. But so, yeah, it was it was created, but it was not mar- not marked as newbie friendly. But yeah, definitely. I guess you can find it pretty easily if you look for uh, you know reporters being Jesse. But yeah, anyway. Yeah. The review process is uh, talking about like opening these these tickets and such and opening the process a bit more a review process would be really critical here too because one thing we have to keep in mind is that long term we're trying to you know we've already taken some steps we're trying to create a, a sustainable design system over the long yeah. term and so um i'm definitely open to the, the stuff we're talking about but we also have to be cautious that um, a particular um, newbie friendly PR doesn't conflict with, uh, for example, the color palette that we've defined, right? Stuff like that. Um, yeah, so you know, I process your would be really. 
yeah. I understand your concern, Joe. This is a valid one. And at the same time, you know, if we define a new thing, new system, new whatever, uh, and we don't kind of uh, challenge it, make it go through actually like someone else than Felix being able to follow it, then, you know, it's actually also going to be interesting to see how people understand the design, you know, rules, system we've put in place to be compliant, to be complying with it, you know, and then work together. And I expect with the group of people here, I mean, team is reviewing every single PR on the <laughs> core. Uli is doing a lot of work. I'm, I'm not too concerned that, you know, we will be able to request a review from Felix, from Gavin, who's also pretty active. And I thought people, you know, are, are knowledgeable about, you know, the UI. So I'm not too concerned about that. I think we should open indeed and be still, yeah, right. Not break the work or like be in the position of what we've, we've achieved so far, yeah. Yeah, always a, a interesting balance for us to strike when we're talking, especially talking about this CSS work, right? Because long term, we we're we're aiming for consistency, but also we want to achieve it, you know, improve our efficiency. So, I think we're on the same page here. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Also concerning the landing page and the, the current topic about the newbie friendly uh, task and things like that, I think it could be really interesting to put aside what was decided to not be taken as a priority by the UX SIG at the moment, to let the thing being done by newbie friendly and things like that, to be sure that we are not taking the things from the workload from Felix in a sense. If we want to provide some uh, improvement on uh, some UI or things like that, it's especially important to know that it's something that is independent and that will not take some uh, conflict or things like that with what is planned by the SIG in a sense. So for example, the admin monitor is something that is definitely not um, inside the current scope of what Felix is doing. So to let the people know that they can take that task without perturbing the order system could be useful. Mm. Yeah, or maybe even some tasks that we will handle in the future, but people if somebody, for example, if somebody wants to go ahead and set up a storybook to have a UI library, a UI com a component library visible, please be my guest. It's something that's tough work. <laughs> so, yeah, we appreciate any contributions there. Definitely. <laughs> Just in case, Roman, uh, the uh, monitor stuff, it's also a security discussion there about the separation between warning and error and things like that. Okay. All right, guys, we're at the hour, so I think we need to wrap this up. But uh, it's probably a good topic to put on the agenda for next time to think about how we can bring more people on board. So. Yeah. We will think something about how to restructure the landing page, the SIG page, sorry. Yeah. So okay. big thanks to Felix and Joe and Uli and, well, everybody else for joining. And thank you, Roman, for uh, being here for the first time. Thank you all. Okay. Happy to help. No, thank you. Yeah. Thank cool. you, everybody. Thank Bye. you, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Cheers. Have a good one. Bye. Thanks.